Hey guys, it's Mel. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I have been sick. I've got a nasty sinus infection that I just can't seem to get rid of. My face is very painful. Yeah, I just have been feeling absolutely shocking. Last week, I put my store into a time away mode again because I was so sick. That means today I have to go do my shipping. I've got 128 orders there waiting for me to post. But I wanted to tell you, I'm a little bit nervous to go back into the storage units today. I'm not going to lie. I had a bit of an incident at the storage units with one of the other people who rents one of the units below me. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about it, but I feel like I probably should because it's really kind of affected the way that I want to go into the storage units now. I'm actually quite nervous to go in there. So basically about 10 days ago, I was in the storage units and I'd been picking and packing my orders and I was all done. I was just pottering around the units. One of the staff members, she came up there to the top you know up to my units she came and she got my attention I had the airpods in I hadn't 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 heard her but I saw her basically she said to me Mel can you come down and move your car there is a guy who is downstairs who has been sitting in his car honking the horn trying to get my attention I obviously didn't hear it I had the airpods in I was listening to music also I wouldn't have actually thought that somebody downstairs in the driveway honking their horn was actually looking for my attention <laughs> So there's nowhere for anybody who works in the top level to actually park your car. There's no designated car places. Basically, you pull up in the driveway, you park your car somewhere, and you go up. I've been working in these storage units for a year. I'm very, very familiar with all the people who use the units down below on a regular basis, and I would never ever park in front of one of their units. You know, there are a few businesses that use them for business reasons, and they are there on a daily basis. And I know exactly which ones of those units are being used like that. Most of the other units are there for long-term storage and nobody ever really comes. So the day before I'd been at the units, I'd parked in front of this particular unit because it had no padlock. Anyway, so I went down to move my car. There was no problems with me whatsoever having to move my car. Of course, I'll totally move my car if somebody needs to get in front of their units. I was automatically thinking, this guy must be pretty rude if he was sitting down there just honking his horn, expecting me to come down knowing that he was calling for me. Automatically in my brain, I'm sitting there thinking, what a rude <laughs> So I went downstairs and as soon as I got down the stairs, this guy got out of his car and he started abusing me for parking my car there. Straight away, I was taken off guard here and I'm not one to be pushed around. I'm pretty tough. <laughs> I basically just said to him, where would you like me to park? I said, there's no parking available for anybody who has a top storage unit and I still need to go up and down my storage unit. I said, I pay for these units just as much as you and I need to take my stock up and down. And he was pointing at one of the other units, park over there. So then I kind of came back to him and I said, well, what's the difference between me parking there or parking in front of yours? I've just got to park somewhere. If you see my car here, come upstairs, let me know that you need access to your unit and I'll quite happily come down and move it. He just started yelling at me, he started abusing me, calling me names and I started to yell back and I started to yell louder and he started to come closer to me and we ended up both pretty much screaming at each other quite close. <laughs> he did not like me arguing with him. He got about an inch from my nose and he he did the double slap like he was slapping my face. An inch from my face, like he was right up close in my grill. By now, the adrenaline was running through my body. I was shaking. I was screaming loudly. I wasn't really reacting in probably the best way. I certainly gave it back to this guy. I was not happy. Anyway, once he did this double slap in front of my face, like he was going to hit me, I was livid. And I was literally running on, a, on adrenaline. I got in my car quite aggressively. I moved my car. <laughs> not going to lie. <laughs> the adrenaline was pumping through me. <laughs> got out of my car, went upstairs shaking <laughs> shaking that i just had this massive argument and some guy literally attempted he didn't he he planned his slap so that he wouldn't hit me but the fact that he did it meant that he wanted to hit me do you know what i mean and like what kind of guy does that to a woman i mean what type of person does that to anyone anyway but like the fact that this strange guy wanted to hit me 
off. The adrenaline was running through me. So anyway, I went upstairs, I got all my stuff, closed down my storage units, went back to my car, and I went over to his car, I took a photo of his number plate, and I yelled out to him that I was gonna report him to the police. And then I told him oh, I was gonna get my husband on the phone. In the end, I got back in my car, I knew I was overreacting, and I got out of there and I drove away. And then after I drove away and I had time to calm down, that's when it started to kind of hit me. We both, you know, didn't react in the way that we should have. Don't like confrontation at all, but if somebody gives it to me, I'll give it to them back, especially when I feel like if I didn't deserve it and I didn't deserve that. I now feel really quite nervous to go back to my unit. This guy knows my car. He's parked directly underneath my units. He's only new to the storage units and I don't know whether or not he's gonna be a regular there if he's using this for business. I am very conscious of him seeing me again. I think I'm gonna to have to literally park my car right around the other side of the storage units, which is gonna be a pain in the butt for getting my stuff up and down. I just feel quite nervous about being upstairs because when I'm upstairs in the storage units, I'm pretty much alone up there. I can't see who's arriving. I can hear cars when they arrive, but I don't know who they are or where they're parking unless I physically go down and look. So if I hear a car down there now, I, I'm not gonna know if it's him. And I, so I kind of feel a little bit on edge about being in the storage unit. It's just put a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> and like, I totally know that I didn't react. You know, I probably shouldn't have screamed back at him as much, but I'm just not gonna cop abuse for something that I didn't deserve. There's nowhere else for me to park. I'm not really sure what I could have done. Could I have gone to the police and, uh, and reported him for, you know, attempt? Maybe. Ah, anyway, let's go to the units. <laughs> okay, so I finished picking my 126 orders. I'm pretty sure this table is about to buckle. <laughs> I'm praying it doesn't fall on me. I've got a few tables, but this one I had books on that I was planning to photograph, and this one's got books on that I've been working at, so I didn't have any more. This table here is absolutely chockers as well, so I had to make do with one table today while I was picking, and fingers crossed, it doesn't collapse on me before I get to pack them off. This is what 126 orders looks like. I thought about putting some of these books on the ground just so it's easier for me to see when I've got my labels on the desk so I can work a bit faster. But I've got such a mad sinus headache that every time I drop my head, it all just rushes and I've just got so much pain. So I'm just gonna have to work through this even if it takes me a little bit longer. Now I wanted to show you this set of books. Now when I found these books, there were six of them here, but they were listed as $15 a book in the charity shop. So for the six of them, that was $90. These books were selling for anywhere between $40 and $50 as a new book. However, there was not many of these books that were sold secondhand. Now within a week of these being listed for $225, I got an offer for $215 and so I quickly without hesitation took that offer. I had put $90 into these books and I didn't want them sitting on my shelf for a long time because that's a lot of money that's tied up into six books. So let me know, would you have taken the punt on those books? If you'd seen them into the charity shop or the thrift store for $15 a book, which is a lot of money considering I normally only have to spend 50 cents to a dollar per book. <laughs> so paying $15 a book, uh, that was a little bit of a gamble for me, but because I did my research, I felt fairly confident that these were going to be quite a unique sale, but also a fast seller because there was quite a lot of them that had sold brand new in the last 90 days. I was pretty confident to take that punt. Let me know in the comments, would you have taken the punt? Do you pay up for items or do you only ever buy cheap items? I thought this was another interesting sale that was worth showing you. Now I advertise this as one big bulk lot. So this is the True Blood series book set. There is 13 books in this series. I pick these books up for about 50 cents each. I have a lot of True Blood. So what I've done here is I've built a full set of True Blood, but I also had a full set of True Blood in the DVD series. So rather than list them individually, I thought, why not make this a unique bundle? Nobody else has got a listed bundle of the book set along with the DVD set. There are other people selling 
the full set of True Blood. I have got so much True Blood here, I can list another full set by itself. I thought, let's take a punt and try and sell it as one big lot, make it a unique bundle, make it so that my bundle is different than anyone else's listed, and boom, that has sold. So that is a great way to make your listing stand out, make it a little bit different than someone else's, and get the sale. Okay, so it's 2.30 in the afternoon. I've got 126 orders to pack. <laughs> How long is that going to take me, 126 orders? I'm going to aim for the 30 minutes. So I want to be done by about 3 p.m., quarter past three at the latest. Um, might take me a little bit longer just because of the way they're stacked. I've got to find them all now. 126 orders. Let's see how quick I can do it. So I've been packing for half an hour. I've managed to fill six IKEA bags right up here with shipping. But these are all the ones that I've still got left. So... I've probably got another half an hour here, to be honest. So let's aim for 3.30. I'll tell you where we're at at 3.30. 13 IKEA bags full of orders. It is now four o'clock. So that means it took me an additional hour than I expected. I mean, who would have thought half an hour to do 126 orders? Anyway, it's taken me an hour and a half to bag all those items up. So not pick them. It, it didn't take me as long to pick them. It only took me quite a long time to pack them. There was quite a lot of bundles in there. There was a few multi-orders. So I had to do some excess packing, which always takes longer if I have to do like double wrapping or anything like that. 13 bags. I'm going to take those to the post office now. I've got something else I want to show you. So hold on. Whew, okay. I've just dropped those parcels to the post. That has really taken it out of me while I'm sick to do that many orders you know like i can really feel it in my chest like it's like because my nose is so congested i'm having a lot of trouble breathing but i wanted to show you guys i have got some beautiful friend mail here from um a couple of people that follow me it's not very often that i've had some friend mail so it's kind of really exciting so i have got two here same envelope and these are by a lovely viewer named joan now, Joan has sent me these all the way from Spain, and there's two here, and one of them actually says on the back, do not open until July the 13th, which was my birthday. So I'm presuming this one's for my birthday, and this one is, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. So today is the 19th, my birthday has been and gone, but it's just so exciting to me that somebody has sent me mail from Spain. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joan. You've been a massive supporter of my channel. You're always leaving me comments and supporting me, and I just can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Oh my gosh, beautiful. Oh my gosh, look, guys. Joan has made this most beautiful card. It is like three-dimensional. It is like books. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Joan, this is absolutely stunning. Happy birthday, Mel. It's your birthday, so grab a chair and a coffee and read a book, hee <laughs> hee. Best wishes from sunny Spain, Joan. I've made this for you. Joan, this is absolutely the most beautiful card I think I've ever got. Mel and family. Oh my gosh. Your cards are so beautiful. Dear Mel and family, good luck in your new home. Look at these. These are like 3D, the most beautiful cards, scalloped edges. Dear Mel and family, good luck and best wishes in your new for home. Love, Joan, your YouTube follower. Thank you so much. Honestly, like, these mean so much to me, Joan. I'm going to put these in my new eBay shed. These are going to go up on a special part of my ebay shed okay look at this big one i don't know what this is but this has been sent to me from the aussie hustler shout out she's got a youtube channel so you can go follow her at the aussie hustler so let's see what she sent me she told me that she saw this and she thought straight away of me let me read the card first okay <laughs> the card looks like it's sealed i don't know if this <laughs> i don't know if she's actually written in this or if it's um if they've sent it from the shop <laughs> It's blank. <laughs> but it's happy birthday. So this is a happy birthday present. I love this. Thank you. Let me have a look. Oh, <laughs> look what she sent me. Get shit done. That is my all time motto. I absolutely love this. This is so going in my new shed. Oh my goodness. It is a magnetic weekly planner. Get shit done. <laughs> I absolutely love this. I would have bought this myself if I've seen it. <laughs> Thank you.
thank you so much for sending this to me for my birthday. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it. I love all you guys here on YouTube. Like, honestly, it just blows my mind that I have people that I've never even met who want to send me gifts. Like, honestly, I just feel so lucky, so grateful. And, you know, I really appreciate that, you know, I just, I just, it blows me away. <laughs> thank you so much for all the love, guys. And stay tuned i've got another shed video coming soon i'm sorry i haven't been like 100 percent will to be making like some really high energy vlogs <laughs> i hope to be doing that again soon if you want to see one of my other videos where i am full of a little bit more energy and not a clogged up nose i'm going to link it right here for you now if you haven't seen it go and check it out thanks so much guys check you in the next one bye